leaving its home station at Beale Air Force Base, California, the 9th Reconnaissance Wing Unmanned Aerial System, the Global Hawk UAS, headed east. The aircraft landed a few hours later at Naval Air Station Patuxent River in Maryland, where it refueled and received general maintenance from a unique crew of Joint Service Technicians. This is one of the first joint endeavors that we've had with the Navy. Uh, on top of that, the first time that we've gone east, uh, which is a logistically sig significant in getting aircraft over the AOR. Air Combat Command Airmen and Navy contractors integrated their knowledge and capabilities, preparing the high-altitude Global Hawk for the next leg of its mission. There was a lot of effort. There was uh, a lot of manpower and moving of many people that had to take place. Um, a, lot of, a lot of working with a lot of people. So that makes the get, job get done. It was one of great experience right here, man. You, you see the other half of what I'm so used to having, you know, a Navy thing where where the Air Force is the first time work with them. All we do is just stand by, help them out if they need help. We're both uh, still kind of small uh, programs compared to the more traditional uh, air assets that are out there. So it does help that we can both provide each other with information, lessons learned. Hours later, the Global Hawk launched towards its area of responsibility, a total of 10,600 nautical miles. The aircraft completed its first transatlantic flight, but its mission is far from over. The aircraft's been on the ground about six hours, a little less than six hours, and we're going to uh, turn it for a GWAT tonight and fly a full scheduled 24-hour GWAT mission. The Global Hawk is code one. It's perfect. It didn't have any problems. So it's, a, it's an amazing airplane. The combined efforts of the Air Force and Navy spanned over 30 flight hours and two continents, making it seem like the sky is the limit for unmanned aerial systems. Yeah, right now this program is the tip of the sword. ISR, Intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance, I look forward to seeing a lot of more unmanned aircraft. The impact, I believe, is going to be really huge. It's, it's, it, what I see what we're doing here is, very, is really groundbreaking uh, because we've opened the door to uh, not only a different aspect of joint ops, but joint ops relative uh, to unmanned aircraft. What I look for the future is, the, is it becomes one common way. That we work with all our sister, uh, our sister services to where we can streamline both the acquisition process but also the operational process. For ACC, I'm Staff Sergeant Josie Wise, Patuxent Naval Air Station, Maryland.